Okay, this video is about um, how you combine these different vectors in GCSE to find the overall result of what would happen when you've got lots of different vectors and you put them together. So, let's have a look at this question here. We've got uh, uh, two triangles. Um, we're told that the vector O to A is 6A. So we're told this is 6 a, we're told that the vector O to B, O to B, that whole thing there is 6B. We're told that M is the midpoint of AB, that's why those lines are there. And we need to write the vector O to M in terms of A and B. So O to M, that's it. So what we do for this? we need to find some combination of vectors that will allow us to get O to M. Well, I could combine the vectors of O to A plus A to M. So if I combine these two vectors, that gives me the overall result of O to M. O to A, I know what that is easily, it's 6A. A to M, I'm not quite sure what that is yet. But I do know that this is half of A to B. So I could write plus half of A B. Now, A B, what's that? Again, I've not got that written on my diagram, but I could write AB as being the combination of A to O plus O to B. It's going to give the same result as starting from A and ending at B. Now, A to O, well, that's equal and opposite to O to A equal and opposite, so it's going to be a minus 6a, and then I'm adding the 6b. So if that is a to b, then half of a to b, half of this, is going to be minus 3a plus 3b. And we can simplify this vector a little bit. So O, M, because the 6a take away the 3a is 3a, and the 3b is there. Okay, so that's my answer to O to M. This is 3a plus 3b. And I could mark that on my diagram here, this vector here. <coughs> okay. We're told N is the midpoint of OB. So this is the midpoint of OB, that's why these lines are there, because that's equal to that. And we're told that G is on the point on OM, here's G, such that the ratio of O to G to G to M is 2 to 1. So this is two parts, that is one part. So straight away I could divide up this 3A plus 3B in the ratio of 2 to 1. Right, the question says, show that A, G, N is a straight line. A, G, N. I want to show you this is a straight line. Now what you should have learned in GCSE is that if I want to show that A, G, N is a straight line, if I work out the vectors A to G and then the vector A to N, if the vector here and the vector here if those two vectors are parallel, and they both go through the same point, 
which they do because it's point A, then it must be a straight line. So I'm going to work out AG, then afterwards I'm going to work out AN, and as long as what I get is parallel vectors, I've managed to prove that AGN is a straight line. Alternatively, you could do AG and GN, that would work. Or you could do um, AN and GN, that would work as well. Very well, I'm going to do this. So, um, A to G. Well, to do A to G, I'm going to combine the vectors A to O and O to G. The resultant of these two vectors will give me um, A to G. A to O, I know that that is minus 6A. Uh, and then I want O to G. Now, to O to G, that's two parts of this o, o to M. This O to M was 3A plus 3B. So if I split this 3A plus 3B in the ratio of 2 to 1, so one part of this would be 2A plus 2B. Sorry, one part of it would be A plus B. So two parts of it will be 2a plus 2b. So from here to here, that is just 2a plus 2b. I've just split that um, 3a plus 3b. That's the whole thing. And all I've done is I've divided that by 3, because I've got three parts here, and then times it by 2. And that gives me my 2a plus 2b. OK, simplify that a little bit, and we get minus 4a plus 2b. So that is the vector from a to g. Now let's do the vector from a to n. To do that, I'm going to go from a to o, and then o to n. A to O, I know what that is, it's minus 6A, minus 6A, and O to N, well I know that that's the midpoint of O to B, so if the whole thing is 6B, then O to N is just going to be 3B. Right, so we have these two vectors, AG is minus 4A plus 2b and a n is minus 6a plus 3b and I'm hoping for them to be parallel because if they're parallel then I've managed to prove them. In order for them to be parallel then I know that one of them is going to be the multiple of the other one and I can see actually if I were to times a g by one and a half I would get a n. I could actually write down a n equals 1.5 times a g. Hopefully you can see that. If you times this by 1.5 you'll get this. If you times this by 1.5 you'll get this. And if you can find a number such like 1.5 where that is the case, then that means if one of them is a multiple of the other one, they must be in the same direction. Just one of them is bigger than the other one. So now I can buy a sentence and say A N and A G are parallel and share point A, they both go through point A. So A G N must be a straight line. There's, no other, there's nothing else it could be. If you've got two parallel vectors and they both go through the same point, then it's just got to be a straight If you've got two parallel vectors, this vector here is parallel to this vector here, and they both go through the same point, it has to be a straight line. So there we go.